I'm gonna disassemble this. Doesn't work. Put the ice packs in. Oh, that's hot. This is the Oyster Tempo, a vacuum insulated cooler that promises to keep your items cold even without ice. Is it too good to be true? We're about to find out in this comprehensive review. A big thank you to Oyster for sending over their Tempo cooler for me to test and review. Let's take a look at the parts. We have the universal key. I think this is how the strap and handle are held on. We have the thermal battery, also known as an ice pack. Pretty thin. Premium feel, high quality materials. Very, very nice. Wow. And then this is the main carry handle. Nice, smooth aluminum, very elegant, clean, sleek. And of course we have the heavy duty canvas bag. Has a mirror brand logo, so it leaves an impression in the sand. Really beefy rubber feet. I love the fact that this handle opens like this and you can also close it and open it from the other side. Or you can remove the lid altogether. Beautifully done. It will be a shame when it gets its first scratches and dents. Main body of the cooler. Rubber gasket. The bottom is reinforced. You see the seam here. These are the main sides here. And then you see this lip. It looks like this bottom is a double layer of aluminum. Just like this top rim is also heavily reinforced. These ice packs are designed to fit neatly in the bottom. I'm gonna assemble it now. We have the handle, clips on to the end here. Insert, turn, simple enough. This just goes in and turns, so it goes in vertically, twists and locks in, and the handle is now installed. It's very simple. It's the same thing for the strap, but I'm gonna be using the handle for now. I do wanna get these in the freezer. I'm gonna freeze them at about negative four Fahrenheit, and that way I can test this out tomorrow. Well, my first impressions are that it's very sleek. It feels good just to touch. Everything on it has a nice, clean, precise feel. I can see that there's a lot of engineering into this. This is not your average cooler. It almost feels and looks too nice to use. But my goals with this are to use it and abuse it. My understanding is that the cooler is fully rebuildable. Like you can just take the handle apart like this. The machining and casting is just really, really nice. This inside surface here is very smooth, obviously, so it makes a nice gasket surface with the, the rubber gasket inside. They have their thermal technology patented called Delta, D-L-T-A. Well, this is a plastic piece that the lid attaches to, and it's just held on by these, I think they're stainless steel pins. Well, now I'm curious. I think later in the video, I'm gonna disassemble this. I've seen the animations, and I wanna see how to disassemble these handles. It's absolutely beautiful. It's really more like a piece of art. When the opportunity came to review this Oyster Tempo cooler, I was initially skeptical. The concept of a cooler that doesn't require ice, but still promises to keep its contents cold, was just too intriguing to pass up. For the past few months, the Texas heat has made it really challenging to get our groceries home from the grocery store without them melting or wilting. And we certainly don't want our meats to get warm on the way home. We've been relying on our Anchor Everfrost powered cooler, but it's bulky and it requires a battery. It's been strapped into the back of our car for weeks because it's just too heavy to move in and out easily. And that is where the Oyster Tempo comes in. My hope is that this can serve the same purpose without the need for a battery and it'll be much easier to move around. Ideally, we can load this up at the grocery store and then carry it right back inside. Whereas before, we've been loading up the cooler and then having to transport everything from the cooler back into the house. I chose to record this video today and tomorrow because today is 108 degrees and tomorrow is gonna be about 110. So I'm gonna get those ice packs frozen and test this out all day tomorrow. I'm probably gonna go grocery shopping, leave it out in the sun, and I have some cool thermometers that I'm gonna leave inside to track the temperature. So let's put the Oyster Tempo to the test. All right, so it's the next morning. Today, I'm gonna do a little bit of thermal testing. It's gonna be about 110 degrees today, and I wanna put the cooler outside in the sun and see how it performs. And then later today, I'm planning on going grocery shopping. So let me grab the cooler and put the thermal ice packs in it, and we can monitor the temperature using a Bluetooth thermometer that will track and graph the temperature over time. I want it to dangle down inside a little bit. Yeah, that'll work. 
All right, so these are called Govi or Gove. This is in my RV freezer. It's saying about 75 degrees right now. I'm gonna close the cover. Before I put the ice packs in, I'm gonna go put this in the sun and just see how it tracks. Does it get hot very quickly or does it maintain that internal temperature for a little while? So we're starting at 11.15 and it is 75.7 degrees. Just gonna let it sit here and bake in the sun. While the cooler bakes in the sun, why don't we go over some of the product details and the company's key claims. The Oyster Tempo Cooler is a vacuum insulated cooler that promises to get three times colder than traditional coolers like the Yeti and Arctic. It gets colder faster and stays cold longer. And that probably also works for hot things as well. The cooler also solves three major thermal challenges. Number one is core insulation. This is about limiting heat transfer between the inside and outside of the cooler, which keeps things cold longer. Number two is thermal bridges. Thermal bridges occur due to the gap between a cooler's lid and main compartment. This creates a thermal bridge that allows greater temperature exchange between the inside and outside of the cooler. Oyster claims a 1.4X improvement over other coolers. Number three is thermal circulation, which is how fast the cooler cools down inside and how evenly the temperatures circulate around the interior. Aluminum is very thermally conductive and helps circulate cool air much faster than plastic. Delta Thermal Technology. Their vacuum insulation technology is patented, but they don't see it limited to coolers. They hope to use it for medicine, organ transports, and many other purposes that will bring the world forward. A space-saving design that gives you three times more space with nearly half the external size. It skips the two to one ice to can ratio and perfectly fits 36 cold cans of your choice without all the extra weight of the ice itself. Of course, this means pre-chilling your drinks before you put them in the cooler. They also say that ice isn't required, that you can simply put cold things in the cooler and they'll stay cold. I know how well this works with my vacuum insulated cups and bottles, but I really wanna see how well that works with groceries. I do like that they included these ice packs that fit perfectly in the bottom of the cooler, and because of the excellent thermal circulation, they should work extremely well at keeping things cool. The cooler is about 20 inches wide, 12 inches deep, and 13 inches high, and it weighs just over 12 pounds. It has a 24 quart capacity, which is 23 liters or about 6 gallons. They claim that it's fully repairable because you can disassemble and replace individual parts. It's also 100% recyclable and comes with a lifetime warranty. The cooler's compact size makes it more versatile and easily fits into smaller spaces. The vacuum insulated walls can be much thinner than foam insulation, which reduces the overall size of the cooler. They do have a really nice website with additional information. Be sure to check it out if you're interested. I'll leave a link to it down below. It's 11.33 right now and the temperature has continued to drop. It's actually 74.8 in there. And my guess is that the cooler was actually cooler inside than the ambient air temperature. So we're gonna see a quick dip in temperature and then it should flatten out from there. But it's been sitting in the sun for almost 20 minutes now and it's actually gone down in temperature. So it is currently 109.7, call it 110 for easy numbers. And it's only noontime. It's up to 86.2 degrees in the last hour. It's 12.15 right now. So that's not too bad considering there's nothing inside of it and it's being baked at somewhere between 160 and 146 degrees. Picnic table is 161. The top of this is 136. Significant temperature reduction because of the reflection of the aluminum. So that's actually a really nice feature to have on a hot sunny day. What I'd like to do now is put the ice packs in. Oh, that's hot. I'd like to put the ice packs in here and watch the temperature drop and then see how it does for the rest of the day. So right before the ice packs go in, it looks like it's at about 86.2 degrees. These ice packs were down to about negative five degrees. And I'm just gonna let it sit in the sun. Make sure that drops in there like that. Okay, locked back up, ready to go. You'll have to excuse me for nerding out a little bit. You can see, obviously, I opened the cover and then closed the cover, and you can see how rapidly the temperature drops. We started at a maximum temperature of 89.6, and it's already down to 40.6 in one hour. Keep in mind that sitting in 110 degree heat directly in the sun on a 150 to 160 degree picnic table. So that is pretty impressive. All right, so it's about 2.30 now, and this has been sitting out in the sun since I think 12.15. The temperature chart shows that it dropped down to about 39 degrees pretty quickly, and then it stayed within about one degree of that. And that's pretty impressive considering that the table is like 160 degrees and the side of the cooler is hot to touch, 120, 130 degrees. This is a really extreme test because no one's gonna leave their cooler in the direct sun on a 110 degree day. Of course, if I were to put this in the shade, it would drastically change the numbers. But I wanted an opportunity to put this through a really extreme case. If this were to be on a picnic table and the sun were to hit it, it's not gonna really affect the temperature. 
So Sasha's getting out of work early and I'm gonna meet her in town to do some grocery shopping. Ooh, that's hot. All right, put the cooler back here. Take the cover off. And then just let everything warm up. It's got about an hour and a half to warm up before we actually put groceries in it. I have become a little obsessed with vacuum insulation. These are all vacuum insulated and they're pretty much the only cups I use. It started off because of this bottle. I didn't really know what it was. I just saw the reviews were really good. Well, come to find out it's vacuum insulated and I've been using it for about five years, the same bottle. And it's got tons of dents and dings. We've got our stickers all over it and I've fallen in love with it because I can put ice in it and the ice will last like two days. If I have cold water in it, like I have right now, just cold water out of the fridge and I leave it in the truck and it sits in the sun, it doesn't heat up. The outside of the bottle might be 125 degrees, but the water inside is nice and cold. So now, like I showed you earlier in the video, all of my mugs, all of my coffee cups, all my thermoses, everything is vacuum insulated because I realize how well it works. While I drive to the grocery store, I'll just give you my thoughts. When Oyster contacted me by email and offered the cooler in exchange for a review, I kind of fell in love with it. The whole reason I agreed to do this video was because I wanted the cooler. I did a little bit of research, I read their website, and I read a few write-ups on the cooler itself, and the reviews were very positive. So when I saw the Oyster Tempo and read about it, I was just dying to try it out. I've been telling Sasha for weeks now that I can't wait to get it and play with it, partly because it's beautiful and partly because I think it's gonna solve a lot of the issues that we've had. I don't like dealing with ice, which is exactly why I was really excited about the Anchor coolers, but those are definitely big and heavy for daily use. They're great for weekend camping trips. Uh, we've done that several times. We've taken them to hotels. We go on two or three day drives with it in the back and the battery is enough to keep it running for about 36 hours. So that means I can charge while driving, all of that stuff. But for the grocery shopping, they're just too heavy and big. They're hard for Sasha to move around and you do have to keep track of the batteries. So the idea with this Oyster Tempo is that we're gonna just leave it in Sasha's car so that when she goes grocery shopping or if we're out and about and we get some takeout and we wanna have a place to keep our hot food hot, we can just pop it in the cooler. We're gonna do our grocery shopping today. We're gonna jam some stuff in there and see how it does. And my guess is that during that hour long drive, all of the food inside should stay at a relatively comfortable temperature. Whereas if we just left them in the shopping bags, they would end up being very hot. We've had that happen. We've lost ice cream, we've lost food. And that's exactly why we rely on a cooler for grocery shopping in Texas. Anyways, that's enough rambling. I will check in with you at the grocery store. I'll see you in a minute. I made it. Now I'm just gonna wait for Sasha to get out of work. Are you spying me? I am. On me, I say. Oh, do you want to go on the truck? Oh, I don't care. You can take my car. Oh, another crazy busy day. Have you been shopping, honey? Well, well, a few days ago. Well, and we can put the groceries in your car. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, because I know you don't have any space in here. And no, well, I had the cooler with it. My car is a better shopping mobile. It is anyway. So, I'm gonna put the window up because it's okay, 80,000 degrees out there. So yeah, it's only 112 today. Okay. Not bad. Okay. So good. Put the cover back on. I did not bring a bungee cord to hold it, so I think it'll fit right there. Actually, it fits in there nicely. Our favorite store. Honey, this is not groceries. This will be yogurt and meat. That's meat. Meat and ice cream. Meat and ice cream. Well, plenty of space More so meat. far. More meat. Just coming out in the grocery cart, it's hot. Probably should have put the eggs on the bottom. Is that it for the cold stuff? Okay. It all fit. The rest of it does not need to be refrigerated. Nope. Nope. All right, cool. Well, the thermometer is still in there and it will record the temperatures. Oh, we can put your milk in here. Yeah, chocolate in there. that's a good idea. All right. Okay. Texas classic hits. K-Hits. 
955. Well, it looks like I beat Sasha by a little bit, but there she is. Not too bad? Yeah, not too bad, yeah. All right, we have everything else put away. Let's check out the temperature here. So it looks like it got up to 93.6, and that was right before I loaded the cooler. You can actually see where I opened the cover. So it started at 93.6, and it's dropped down, let's see, 45 minutes or so to 62.1. See how it feels in here. Oh, nice and cool in there. All right, let me get this stuff put away. Ice cream is still frosty, surprisingly. Well, I would say success. It's a whole lot better than no cooler, and it's a whole lot simpler than our anchor cooler. So I think we'll keep doing that. That was very convenient. I've done some additional thermal testing, and these are the results. So this was my initial test that I did in the hot sun, and then the cooler warmed up. We put our groceries in it right here. You can see it started off at 93.6. Cooled all the way down to, let's see, 61.7. Uh, we put the groceries away. And of course I didn't touch the cooler for a little while after that. I refroze the ice packs and then I performed a series of additional tests. I put the ice packs in and it sank down quite rapidly, about a half an hour, all the way down to 28.4 degrees. You can see the steep curve, it gets very cold and then it slowly warms up over the period of about 18 hours or so. And then you can see it looks like the ice packs lose their cooling ability here and then it just starts to warm up from there. Now this was done outside underneath my RV and part of the day was exposed to the sun, part of the day was in the shade. It was still about 100 degrees out so it was still pretty hot out. I did this one at night, you can see it drops down, same thing to about 30.4, it gets very cold and then it comes up again about, about 18 hours and you can see the curve, it stays cold, cold, cold and then it shoots up. So I decided to put a one gallon jug of water in with it and see how that would change it. And you can definitely see a difference where it shoots down, but you don't get that initial dip. It actually takes a while to reach peak coldness. Then the ice pack starts to warm back up and you can see the curve. This was a one gallon water jug, which I thought was a good simulation. From here to here is about 16 hours of nice and cold. And actually, you know, it shows 41.6 over here. So, so 5 p.m. to almost noontime, that's uh, 18, 19 hours. If you're storing perishables in there, you're gonna wanna keep the temperature below, you know, 40 or 42. But if you're just keeping drinks in there, you can see you have a good almost 24 hours of keeping it cold just with the ice packs. Especially if you pre-chill everything, that'll really keep it cold for a while. And as an overview, you can see without anything in it, that temperature dips way down really cold, really fast. And then it comes back up over time. Same thing here. But because of the water jug, it stays much flatter and then it curves back up. The amount of time that it stays cold, you can see is roughly the same for each test. Overall, I'm quite impressed with the thermal performance. The vacuum insulation really does seem to do its job. I really thought it would warm up much faster in the sun, but it seemed to handle that heat pretty well. Now after playing with this for the last week, I, I really do like it. And one of the things I wanna try out is disassembling. I did find the instructions on the website and it looks pretty simple, but I figured I'd give it a try on camera so you guys can see exactly what it's like. Bring these arms up to a 45 degree angle and then push down on these tabs, slide them over. Oh, that's pretty easy. Look at that. Then the handle just lifts out. These are like square slotted, fits into this square slot here. Just slide it back in, look at that clicks in, handle's good to go. Now we already covered this. This you just twist, pull out, and it removes. And then you just put it in and twist it and it clicks back together. You can see underneath here, these, these pins. And these pins just come out like this, like that. This just unlocks. And you can see that it just slides onto these tabs. And this entire rubber gasket comes off. This pops off. That's pretty simple. You can take it apart completely, no problems. Something I noticed that I don't really like is that this handle, you can see where it contacts. When it hits, I've done that you know, a few dozen times. And you can see it leaves a mark there and a mark on the cooler right here, right there. Also the handle, it's a little bit flexible, which I don't know if that's a big problem or not. I would imagine if you got it caught on something, you could bend it, 
but it's also just aluminum, you could bend it back. But of course, both of those problems can be solved by replacing the aluminum handle with this nice orange strap. Click that in. So of course I don't have the cover on right now, but that strap works pretty well and won't cause any scratching when you put it down. Now that I have the cooler apart, I wanted to point out that every single part is stamped with an actual URL. So this is a web address. However, when I tried it, it doesn't work. You can see here, I tried that as well and it doesn't work. But I think what they're doing is they're stamping every single part with a unique identifier and you can go to the website and order replacements if needed. So I think that's actually an ingenious idea in terms of sustainability. I like the idea that this cooler can be maintained and rebuilt over time rather than just having to replace it. They even go so far as in this gasket, they put that same address in. So I think that's pretty ingenious. I like that idea. So now to put the cooler back together, I'm just gonna put the gasket on, work it around, get it installed. Plastic hinge mounts, these go in. Pins drop in like that. Do the same thing over here. Put these pins in again. These pins just slide right through like that. You just gotta get it locked in like that. And we'll just clamp that cover back on. And we're off to a picnic. I just realized this strap is even removable. It's just Velcro. So you pop that out. This comes out. And same thing, same ID on there as well. This also has that ID on it, and universal key, they call it, is actually rebuildable. This pin comes out, and then this rubber piece, this rubber insert comes out. So this is all fully rebuildable. And I just love the way they do it. It's so simple. You just gotta get that pin centered again. You can see how it's equal, because if it sticks up too far, it doesn't go into this mount very well. So you just do that, and then you just click it back in. Love it. Like I said earlier in the video, you can see a lot of engineering. Having individual URLs for the parts is pretty smart. I think that's great. But with this kind of modularity, I think it's something that you could keep for decades. I'm gonna be checking to see if these URLs work because if they do, I think that's a really cool idea. Imagine if everything you bought was rebuildable and replaceable and maintainable rather than just throwing it away and replacing it. Overall, the Oyster Tempo is a great little cooler. There's something about the design and the feel of it that just makes it nice to hold and touch. I would say this is definitely a premium cooler. It's on the expensive side. So if you just need a basic cooler, maybe this isn't for you. But if you're someone who prioritizes convenience, aesthetics, and maximum insulation, then this cooler might be for you. I think it's a really brilliant idea that each individual part on this is individually addressable. I really hope they get that aspect of their website set up. This is a new product and a new company. I hope that they stick around for a while because I think their innovation and ideas are incredible. I'm really happy to add the Oyster Tempo to my collection of vacuum insulated products. Now, I don't have access to ice right now and I didn't test this with ice. It's kind of not the point, but I would assume that ice would perform just as well as those ice packs would. Now, I didn't record it, but Sasha and I used this to go out for the day. We did some shopping, we went to the movies, we brought our snacks with us, and this kept things cold all day long. So for me, this is the absolute perfect lunchbox. I can throw it in the truck, I can throw it in my tool trailer, I can throw it behind a seat or just next to me in the passenger seat. If you're tight on space, like in a truck camper or a small RV, then this thing's pretty good because it's gonna take up way less space than some of the bigger coolers. Huh. I wanna talk about the canvas bag here, but I also just noticed that this also has the ID on it. So I'm gonna go check that out on the website. The fact that they include this nice big canvas bag, I think is another really premium touch. You have your cooler, and of course people are gonna to wanna to keep it clean and nice, and they just give you this bag to go along with it. This is definitely a high-end cooler, and it's really, really nice. I like shiny metal things like this, so it was right up my alley. For my list of pros, it's lightweight and compact. It makes it easy to carry. The dual latches are a brilliant idea. It means you can open from both sides, and that really grabbed my attention. It doesn't require pre-chilling, which is great for unexpected shopping trips and our occasional day trips. You just throw your cold items in there, maybe throw an ice pack in if you want, and you're good to go for the day. 
It does come with that tote bag for storage. It's a nice touch that'll keep it clean and protected from scratches. Now for my cons, it is on the expensive side. However, it is competitive with some of the top tier coolers. And I would say performance wise, this is a top tier cooler. Initially, I was gonna say that I was a little concerned with durability, but after taking it apart and looking at it, I don't really think I'm gonna have a problem with that. I think these corners are gonna be the main impact areas and that's gonna take most of the abuse. I don't think the sidewalls matter if those get dented and I don't think this matters if it gets dented. The real issue is on the hardware, which I think is pretty high quality and obviously it's easy to replace if you have a problem. One of the concerns I do have is that these small parts could potentially get lost. You know, maybe you bump that in the sand that drops out and it falls and you can't find it. So overall, I think it's a great cooler. I'm super excited to have it. I'm looking forward to using it in the future. I'm probably gonna do a long-term follow-up because like you, I'm curious to see how well the finish holds up and how many dents it gets. I'll leave links to all the information on the Oyster Tempo below, as well as some purchase links if you guys are interested in purchasing one of these. If you like nice stuff, it just has a high-end premium aesthetic that you just can't deny. It's really, really enjoyable to play with. If I missed anything, please leave me some comments down below. Overall, I'm very happy with it. Thermal performance is excellent. I'm gonna leave links to everything down below make sure to check them out don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this type of content thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye it's absolutely beautiful it's really more like a piece of art it reminds me of the type of engineering another company a very prominent technology company does